This is Kimberly Quinn, host of the Minecraft podcast, and I can't tell you how much fun I have had doing this podcast. I, I started when the world closed over the pandemic in, a, in an attempt to spread some positivity out there and give people some strategies to enhance their own well-being and reduce anxiety and all that. Now, two years later, we're still growing strong and now listened to by 52 countries across the world. And I've even helped some of my students get going with their own podcasts. It's super easy to do. And I'll tell you, if you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it is the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. I'll just explain for you. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It is a ball. Start today. Greetings, Minecrafters. And welcome to another exciting discussion on all things Minecraft, all things well-being. This is Dr. Kimberly Quinn here today to discuss yet another way to become the boss of our brain. After all, that is the theme of the Minecraft podcast episode because our thoughts lead to feelings, lead to actions or behavior. Therefore, our thoughts dictate our lives. And so today, um, as far as another way to sort of... uh, practice thought control and and sort of save rescue our valuable life minutes we're going to talk about inbox hypnosis like where's she going with that well anyone who's out there in in the uh you know sort of grown-up professional world knows that we many of us are often on a secret mission to somehow get everything done right we've got this even if we're not the type to write down a to-do list we've got it we're holding it in our heads right and so we know that we've the minute we check our inbox in the morning, there's going to be a gazillion emails in there. And we have this in our heads that we just have to answer all of them usually. And not just the email thing. The inbox is also metaphorical for the, the mental list of tasks we have, have all day. We've got many, many tasks, lots of little boxes to check, which also rolls, rolls from the workplace also into the you know family with partners, kids, Take the dog to the vet. You know, there's lots of uh, other tasks in addition to work. And we have this, I think, like sort of unconscious, like secret mission that we're somehow going to check every single box of all those tasks with, you know, families, friends, workplace, partners, and also um, answer every email. I mean, think, think what a high bar that is. And everything is also, as you know, from previous episodes, it's not a word I use often, or any of these polarized words, it's on the list of the terrible 10, actually. Everything, always, never, no one, everyone, because they just don't exist. You know, no one likes me. That's almost 8 billion people. I mean, what are the chances, right? No. Um, So as far as this, the inbox hypnosis thing, you know, we often stay up too late, you know, because we're checking emails or we're getting up too early and our body's still tired on either end of that. And we often, worse than that, uh, is we often put off having fun, you know, with family and friends and ourselves, you know, spending good self time out in the woods, running, skiing, playing Monopoly or doing whatever. And we put all that on, off, like, hang on, honey, be right there. Well, I check, you know, 95 more emails. And we don't realize, um, you know, just what a, what a time sucker all of this is. And, you know, this kind of leads us into sort of, convincing ourselves that 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 this sort of seemingly endless to-do list is temporary think about what an oxymoron that is seemingly endless temporary right so and we just think like oh it's just today and it's just today then one day runs in to another you know and we're in this fantasy world that that these tasks can actually you know all be completed and then after this list of emails and the rest of our micro tasks and to-do lists. Um, you know, once we complete those, then it is then that we'll be happy. It's then that we'll feel inner peace. It's then that we can be relaxed. It's then that I can shut, shut the computer down and everything. And it's then that I can talk with my partner. It's then that I can talk with my young adult kids or my little kids or my grandchildren. 
It's then that I can go read a book or take a hot bath or go for a walk and think of, you know, we're putting off life. We're putting off our life minutes. And I'm certainly not encouraging, you know, being reckless and dumping things on other people. I'm definitely not a fan of that. I'm just talking about really checking what, you know, the apps, the, the really, truly essentials. And in life, if you could see my hands making this like half moon spectrum, there's stuff that's a little important on this end, a little bit more important, medium important. And then we work up to urgency and emergency on the far end, right? And emergency, I think of, you know, fire trucks and ambulances. So most days are not like that, right? Most of our life is not like, like that because most of life is not an emergency. Most of life is not even an urgency. Yet we forget that when we are wrapped up in the inbox hypnotic trance that we've got to get you know every single thing uh, email responded to and complete every little micro task of our jobs and for that house house maintenance we need to do and for our partner and the kids and the grandkids or maybe our aging adult parents and uh, pets and all that and I think it's just a big high ridiculous bar. Meanwhile, while we're delaying things for, for, for emails, you don't have to say, think about it. Do we, does anyone out there want it on their gravestone? She answered every email like, woohoo. Or, you know, he completed every single task at work. Woohoo. Hooray. I mean, I don't think so. And again, I'm not advocating being reckless or irresponsible. I'm advocating for balancing and really running them all through a filter, you know, and, it, it, to sift out what's not essential because there's a good chance a lot of it is just not essential. And in the end, if we had a calculator with, if you add up all those seconds with emails and milliseconds and even the seconds it took to delete any, an inbox and clean it up, I don't ever do that. I have like 10, 15,000 in there. Why? It's not a good use of my life minutes to go through all those and, and delete them just for all these random box store ads and everything. No way. It takes 45 minutes to email us. Even if it took four minutes, to that's four minutes. My, my valuable, valuable life space, not going to happen. Nope, not on this day. And, you know, here's the other thing is that our inbox, which is also metaphorical for the rest of our boxes we're checking, right? Again, with the vet, the pediatrician, the partners, the dinners, the social stuff, the vacuuming, the roof, the septic, tank, all of it, Right. That those boxes are not meant to be empty. Your inbox is not meant to be empty. So, so um, acceptance is the key to most problems. I try to live by that. I believe it's a 12 step program slogan, so it's not mine, but acceptance is the key to most problems. And I forgot if I did a shout out to, to Richard Carlson. Let's do that now. Or don't sweat the small stuff because I read him a lot. And, uh, and, and, and he also did something that I want to compare to right now in his book, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, he did a thing, we I, we talked about it in an episode a while back, about this relates to what we're doing, stay with me here. We did a thing about thinking of home care, your house care, all the maintenance stuff you have to do with your house. Everything from maintenance, maintenance like vacuuming to to roofs, okay? Is thinking it like, think, think of it like you're painting a bridge. I think he used the Golden Gate Bridge, or I don't know, think of the Veranzano, George, the GW, it doesn't ma matter. But in reality, the bridges are never fully painted. They get like two thirds done. There's somebody right behind you painting the, the stuff you just painted a month ago because it's already been worn down by the ocean or, you know, whatever bodies of water they're on and the, and the weather there. So it's just, it's every day. So the inbox and your, our micro tasks of the day and our macro tasks are also not going to be completed. So if we're pushing the envelope of happiness right up and over the horizon, by putting, you know, putting off life till all this is completed. Think about that. That's ridiculous because we're putting off ourselves, our families, our friends. So, you know, when this is complete, I'll be happy. When this is, when the, my to-do list is complete, I'll be happy. I'll have inner peace. I can be relaxed, all that stuff. And, you know, again, we're pushing that, we're pushing our life minutes right over the edge of never happening valuable, valuable life minutes. It's just not worth it. And think about it. We're pushing that over the edge and, you know, the clock's ticking and all of that. And so think about your inbox when, you know, you die, right? Because your inbox is still going to be there when you are food for daisies and worms, or if you're like me, you'll be blowing around in the wind. And what happens to all those emails? They'll still be in there. So people will take over who are still on this earth. They will certainly not waste their valuable life minutes with any of this stuff 
that was personal, unessential. They're just uh, not going to do any of that. And the stuff that is essential will get done. Somebody else will do it. Why? Because you're not there. You know, the world will continue to spin. Other people will take over whatever you didn't finish if they even need to, because a lot of it can just be ignored, right? And because this is how the universe works, it fills in the gaps. So if you think about where the little kids uh, in the summertime on the on the ocean, uh, the beach, you know, when they when they're digging their sandcastle and they they need to have them close enough so they can make the moats and all that, they dig the holes down close to where the water, you know, kind of comes up, and those holes immediately fill up. With water, that's the universe. So those gaps will will get filled in when you're not there to do it. So think about it. What sense does it make to put off your own happiness? There, to me, there isn't a price high enough to pay for that. There just isn't. There, nobody can buy me for that. So putting off your happiness, your inner peace, your family, your friends, it just doesn't make it. It doesn't make sense because meanwhile, your valuable life minutes are just circling the drain, never to come back again. So once again, the, the the message is not to dump things on other people to be a lazy daisy. That's not what we're saying. I have a my husband and I both have crazy work ethics. The thing is to filter out really what is what gives you joy, preferably. Okay, and then there's you know when we are, are adulting, there's stuff we don't always want to do. We can just measure that up though, like what's essential. Let's just say what's essential, not not dumping things on other people, but really question. Very little, if any, probably none will be an emergency. We talked about fire trucks and ambulances. Very little, almost none, will be an urgency, and the rest can be filtered out. Remember, I'm also a fan of the not to do list. The not to do list is fantastic. On most most days, there's at least at least one thing on your to do list, even if you're you don't write it down. You're a mental to do list person. On most people's list, there's at least one thing on there that is not necessary. To happen on this day, at least one, and I would strongly suggest into getting into a habit of getting into that not to do list habit and check off one thing each day that you just don't need to do. So, all right. So, recap: check your state of inbox hypnosis. Keep so you can sort of stick one foot and get it out on solid ground. What do I need to do, and what do I absolutely not to do? Save those life minutes and use those valuable, valuable life minutes to do something that makes your heart sing. And on that note, this is Kimberly Quinn signing off from the beautiful Northern Vermont. Have a mindful day.